Good morning, everybody. What's going on? I'm here to do an update on the crypto markets. Let's get started. First things first, I want to talk about BTC. You can kind of see we've been in this large range, okay? This large range since basically the beginning of the year, around January 5th, and we're just chopping about, just moving up and down in this range. I do think that if you start zooming in, you will start to recognize uh, certain areas of clarity, which is number one, we are slowly moving sideways, but we are technically trying to bring that momentum for the upside. And what I mean by that is if you kind of look at this area where we created these lower lows, okay, we moved sideways away from this range and higher towards this area. Then we came to distribute but then we are once again back in the same range that we were back here. So I think this was sort of your over structure, right? And this is the return back into the range where this is quite possibly a form of reaccumulation. And the reason I say that is because on a day to day basis, right, the way this structure pans itself out can give us a better idea of how exactly we see BTC. Um, heading up from here or heading down from here. Now, with the Biden conference behind us, we just had the jobs numbers released right now. We had some um, other information, you know, in regards to crypto or the economy uh, this past week or last week. All the potentially bad news that could, you know, nuke the markets is behind us. And on top of that, we see BTC continuously grinding down. Now I know we have not really escaped out of this range, so it's a little bit of a wishful thinking, but I do want you guys to keep in mind that if you are still looking at this range, I would not be looking at this to directly short, okay? Even if you don't wanna go long, that's okay. But shorting is a very dangerous game in this area. Why? Because what you've created is, first of all, a huge sideways range, which you drop down from, which you're now once again going sideways, failing to break down and continue down further. Okay, that's reason number one. Reason number two is if you actually look at what's happening in the uh, stock market side, right? So let's go to a daily basis. Okay, actually, let's go to the S&P 500, not the futures. <clears throat> so the S&P 500 had a pretty, you know, bearish day yesterday, but guess what? It's now once again, sitting at these lows that it previously bounced up from. So at the very least, given that today is Thursday and, you know, we have the weekend coming up tomorrow and then the day after, maybe the S&P 500 doesn't just nuke from here. Maybe it just at least chops around sideways, right? Maybe even, even goes up today slightly or tomorrow. And that could mean that BTC gets some relief because of these wins of the S&P 500, the stock market. Um, but what I will say in this particular area is that BTC itself, okay, is, is very uncertain. I honestly have no idea what Bitcoin wants to do. Does it just want to rip up from here and start heading up higher? I don't even know, but if you look at this particular area, right, this is a descending broadening wedge. Okay. You had a touch. Whoops. You had one touch. Uh, actually, let me take that back. You had touch one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is it. When you have, you know, four or more touches on a wedge or a pattern like this, the asset is ready to start making a move, whether it's you know up from here or down from here. Okay, now this descending broadening wedge, as it sits where it is, it technically has a higher probability for upside. And in fact, one could look at this as a inverse head and shoulders. In which case, if you take the inverse head and shoulders, right? So if this is the neckline right here, okay, and say you're breaking out from here, all right the neckline, the target is around $43,800. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, when BTC is ready to head up out of the range, if you want to go long, keep that in mind. All right. 
Um, we also have this descending trend line that is capping price right now. If you don't want to go long and you're wanting to wait for, say, you know, this inverse head and shoulders pattern to break, BTC to break out of this descending trend line resistance that you see, and you wanted to break above this top trend line that that is capping price, there's three different pockets of you know confluence of resistance right here, all sitting all the way up to about 42,800. So you can kind of see you're very, very close to a decision point on BTC. So all you really gotta do is exercise a little bit of patience and you might get to catch a potential breakout. Now, as of right now, in terms of BTC positioning, I don't really have any um, in terms of long positions. Of course, I do have spot BTC, but that I've kind of compounded and held throughout the years. That's like a long-term bag. But if I were to look at BTC right now, I'd say, okay, well, BTC is bottoming. Yeah, maybe there's a play. But if there is a play in BTC, well, I wouldn't take a play in BTC. I would take it on some um, other altcoins, right? So what are the other altcoins that look decent? Well, we know very well that One Harmony has been probably one of the better, um, has been one of the better, uh, uh, structures, right? A better performer than most of the altcoins. Um, FTM, same thing, right? There's another one. I mean, I think Luna technically could also be within that same um, uh, daily structure, daily, you know, uh, uh, potential, you know, performer. Atom is another one way the heck up here, right? FTM, like we said. So these altcoins, four or five altcoins, are really the ones that you want to be keeping at the top of your list. Um, I don't really have a uh, levered position in these. I do have some of these in spot. Uh, some of them right now are break even or you know a slight profit for me. But for the most part, you know that's how I would look at the market. I'd say, okay, well these might produce you know decently over the next coming days. What I will say is keep in mind how things pan out today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Because what, what, could, what could happen really is, you know, here's kind of my, my thought process, okay? First of all, you know, FTM has been in this range. Um, it has basically, you know, come back to this previous high of resistance around 345, but was not able to push all the way through. I could see it maybe getting up here by the weekend time and then starting to break down inside. So keep this kind of structure in mind. And if it was me, um, I would try to get out somewhere around here. Or if you don't get that high, I would try to get out at this range high, which is around $3 or so. Okay. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily like short here or short up here, but either way, you know, it's something to keep in mind just in case price kind of gets you all the way up here. At the very least, you need to be cautious of the fact that this movement could be happening over a weekend. After the weekend, we might just collapse back down further. Okay. Uh, same thing goes for Adam, right? One of my, um, you know, very choppy trades as of late has been Adam. And 45 is an area that I thought Adam would get to. I thought these peaks right here were pretty close to 45, but who knows? Maybe Adam is ready for one more push. Uh, way the heck up here, okay? I mean, I, I do personally think that whether, you know, it's Adam or FTM, Solana, really anything or, or even near, uh, I think these assets are probably going to get beat up uh, if BTC, you know, starts to come back down uh, in, in a very heavy way. But this is what I mean, right? Bitcoin in, in here right now, like it doesn't want to at least to me, it doesn't look like it wants to just start breaking down from here. I would say, in fact, BCC probably wants a bit of a mean reversion, a relief rally, maybe back to the 2022 yearly open, which is $46,200. If you look at the VPVR and um, let me see here. Okay. So if you look at the VPVR right here, right around this yearly open, you could kind of see this high volume node, right? price tends to gravitate towards the most amount of volume and liquidity. So price right now is moving from one high volume level 
right? This has a decent amount of liquidity down here, probably to the next, which is right here around this yearly open that I spoke of. So keep that in mind. This could be the range that you might want to play over the next you know, coming week or two. And if that's the case and say, you know, BTC is going to head out from here, well, then you want to keep an eye on some of these, you know, uh, top notch altcoins. Other altcoins on my list, I mean, Near is obviously one, right? I think Near performs, you know, just as good, if not better than FTM, better than Atom. So definitely one to keep in mind. You can kind of look at this as basically a retest of this uh, 1625 level right here. If you go long here, make sure your stop is slightly deeper, maybe like 1575. Okay. And your target profit is probably around this key high, around 1810, 1825. Okay. Curve Finance, which I think has probably a very good daily looking structure. Um, it's hovering right at the bottom of this channel. You can kind of see right there, we're once again touching at the bottom of that channel. Next stop is probably this 480 marker, maybe like an even number of $5 or something. Um, I don't know if it's going to push up higher from here. I have no idea, right? Who knows? Maybe, you know, BTC and the rest of the market starts ripping up to like 45, 48, 50K or something um, the coming week. And that might drag up some of these altcoins. Uh, but I will say that majority of the altcoins have actually broken their structure. Meaning, um, if you look at this, you know, daily consolidation right here, we pushed up and then we nuked that structure, taking out this low right here. Okay. Number one, then we pushed up. We said, okay, well, maybe that's not the end of it. Right. Then we took out this key high right there. Okay. Deviation came back inside. So what we had was once again, developing a higher low structure right here like that. And then if we zoom in, okay, if we zoom in, you can see this was a low, higher low, higher low. This we put in as a higher high, but then collapsed back down in a very big way, took out this low. So this is once again, a break in structure. So now you have a high, your first low, a lower high, and now a lower low. This is the definition of a downtrend. So as long as curve finance stays under, stays under this high, right? Um, technically, it has the ability to get all the way up here and then start breaking down further, okay? This is the case with many, many altcoins. The momentum has actually been lost for the last several days, maybe even several weeks. Here's um, Matic, right? Matic is also the perfect example of a structure right here of higher lows and this up, you know, this very nice trend line, right? Right there. And that was breached once and now it's definitely breached. Not a good sign. Over here, Matic, same thing. Matic had very nice higher low structure right here, put in this high, failed to stay above this previous high, broke back down inside, took out this low right here, okay? Now you have this high and lower high, right? So Matic by definition has broken its structure. The only way to fix that is price needs to get back above this high, print a higher low and start trending up like this. Then we can say, okay, well, Matic has maybe established a new trend like this. Until then, Matic, Curve, many other altcoins are actually signaling to you that <clears throat> If you're going long, your long should be temporary. Uh, and if you're going short, then you know technically the momentum is on your side, but they need to be swing shorts with deeper stops because these assets are going to pop up and down 10, 15, 20%, okay? So don't have your stops too tight. Again, not investment advice, but just letting you know. All right, and then finally, one of my picks that I gave to the Advantage members, okay, is, looks rare. All right. So this particular asset, um, I mentioned to Advantage members in the late, like $5, I think yesterday, $5.90 or something. And you can kind of see it's popped up a decent amount. Uh, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, first of all, I'm looking at this particular asset is because 
the NFT space still has a good amount of momentum, a good amount of uh, people who are super excited about the space. Most of crypto right now does not have that same excitement. In fact, the sentiment has been crushed. Uh, mo most of the momentum, the volumes have been lost. And so the NFT area is still relatively hot. And so one of the best bets right now that we have within the NFT space, rather than buying you know, collectibles or buying art, is this token, which is Looks Rare. Looks Rare, if you're not familiar with it, they recently had um, sort of an airdrop of these Looks token, and they're giving you amazing staking um, APRs, as you could see right here, right? I mean, just incredible. So if you're staking your Looks token, you're making some really, really good money. So you have incentive to actually stake. And if you have incentive to stake and your money is basically, you know, sitting in these uh, staked um, pools, then you have less supply on the market, which in turn means price can actually move up in an easier manner. So this is why I'm thinking that the NFT area being hot, the fact that people are largely staking their looks tokens, um, is giving us an indication that there is good amount of momentum for this looks token for more upside. I don't know how high, but once I start to recognize that the APRs are coming down, people are starting to move out of these staking pools and starting to sell, then um, we would probably want to start getting out of this trade. So I picked up some looks tokens yesterday. Again, I let my um, paid members know that. If you guys are interested in getting into this trade, Make sure you do your own research, okay? And you can also uh, look on their website and see if you can uh, claim some of their rewards. Um, uh, if you have, you know, sort of used Ethereum or used OpenSea and stuff, I, I think that's how they base uh, some of their some of their rewards, okay? So yeah, do your own research. Um, this one is on FTX, which is great. Um, I think it's on other exchanges as well. So make sure you look into it. So that's really about it, folks. We'll see how the market opens up. There's not a whole lot else I want to talk about. Um, I think uh, there is just probably you know one more thing, which is the uh, Cosmic Universe video. Um, let me see over here. Where is that video? I posted the Cosmic Universe video a couple of days back. So let me see if I could find it real quick for y'all. Um, okay. Uh, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> make sure you guys, you know, come join our discord community. The link is below. Come hang out with us. We have a very bubbling NFT area, which is free for everyone to join. We talk about a lot of, uh, mints that are coming up, potential airdrops, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so come join, come hang out and, uh, good luck to y'all. Cheers.